Hello, welcome everyone. All right, so we are live on YouTube, but also live here on Zoom. So all of us that you are here, we are so grateful to have you. Um, if you are on YouTube live, there will be a little bit of delay, so make sure you're making your comments, but you know, we will get right to you. Feel free to raise your hand in the chat room if you have something to say. And if you're live on Zoom, make sure you're using the chat box as much as possible to give Jared a bunch of love and light, but also to ask a bunch of great questions, because we are going to leave about 15 minutes, uh, maybe a little uh, a little more, depending on how much value and content we have tonight from Jared uh, to ask questions. And tonight we are going to be talking about seller financing, and not just seller financing, how to get someone to say yes, right? How to get them from a, I don't understand seller financing to, oh my gosh, why haven't I known about this my whole life, right? And that's what Jared's gonna be sharing with us tonight. And I have a fun story to tell you, and I know that Jared's gonna, I'm sure, share a little bit about himself, but I will share. When I first met Jared, he was super bubbly, great personality. I mean, how you see him now is how you met him then. I mean, he's just this bubbly person and you want to interact with him. And the first thing that he said to me when he showed up to our first workshop, this was one of my first workshops that I ever taught, and this was about five years ago, he said to me, Maylee, I'm so excited to go door knocking. I love people and I can't wait to learn like how to overcome objections. I thought, oh my gosh, this is my guy. I'm gonna go door knocking with him. And then the next thing that he said to me is, how can I add value in your life? <gasps> Do you remember saying that to me, Jared? It really was huh. so amazing. <laughs> you probably don't remember, it was so long ago. But I just wanted to point that out, that that's the type of person that we're going to be talking with tonight. He isn't just somebody who's going to give you a ton of advice and, you know, so much information free. Like he's just so giving and so willing to share his message. But not only that, but he's the type of person that wants to give and is not a taker. He wants to see everyone succeed. And that is why he's agreed today, tonight, to come on and share with us all the amazing success that he's had with wholesaling and or seller financing deals. So please. No, that are less than Jared Brennan. Actually, come on, let's give it to him. Yay, we have a bunch of announcements after the, but we wanna give as much time to Jared as possible. Stick around at the very end though for some announcements, uh, just so that we can, you know, give you up to date on what's coming for the rest of the week, okay? But Jared, take it away, I'm so excited. Awesome, well, thanks man, I really appreciate it. And, and yes, I was very eager to learn and I'm so grateful that Mitch and Millie were a big, big factor in, in my beginnings from those of you who probably, most of you don't know, but I, I came from Walmart. I was working at Walmart for 12 plus years. And then I, I found the, the community, you know, um, uh, I, I met Mitch and Maylee and uh, things have been a little bit different since then. That's been you know, almost six years now. So yes, I remember uh, Maylee taking me out door knocking and, and teaching me how to, sorry, my camera's going crazy here, but teaching me how to uh, uh, door knock and, and have those conversations. Like I was just like, I, I just want to learn. Just teach me, and uh, you just do it. I'll learn it. It's good. So, it's been it's been a heck of a journey, that's for sure. Um, and I don't work for Walmart anymore. Just if you guys were wondering, uh, it's, it took me about a year to get out of there. But yeah, what what we're gonna talk about today is something that I really really love. And right now in the in the current market, it, it's it's opportunities are abundant for this particular strategy. So when I'm talking, we're talking seller financing, right? There are many different forms of seller financing. So I'm going to say the word seller financing, but this could mean subject to, could be lease option, could be actual just straight up seller financing. It could be wrap around. If you don't know what those things are, that's okay. I mean, you're, if you're if you're a part of the community, you've already you're, you probably know a lot of this, or you know where to go to find out. But uh, it's it's we're going to use those this that seller financing is kind of a blanket term. Okay, I may go in specifics um, depending on your questions. And I'm okay if you have like a question in the middle, you can you can sh you know shoot it out if it's a if it's kind of if it makes sense during the conversation, I, I can address it. But I love it. Uh, so seller financing, why why is that even any good? You know, I mean, people hear about that like it, it's it's really amazing because when you're looking at especially whether it's rental properties or even or even um, uh, fix and flips, because the cost to to get into Money, it costs money, money, you just borrow money, lenders it could be 12% interest. You know, you're putting two points on top of that. And and a seller financing deal, you can get as low as as like there's there's one we're working on right now with Mitch and Mailey that uh, I, I negotiated and they're actually taking that they're taking as a wholesale um with with them and one of their students. 
the interest rate is 2.7%. So they're saving a lot of money just from the money cost on, on just getting a seller financing deal as opposed to a regular rental or a regular fix and flip. And also you, you never have to use your credit. So I've done over 80 transactions and I've never used my own credit, not once. I've rarely, I've rarely used my own money a few times, but most of the time it's, it's been someone else's money, but never my own credit. One day, maybe, but uh, right Let's now there's, there's some love in that in the chat. Let's give him some love. That's awesome. Right. <laughs> if you want to buy some, some properties and without using your money or credit, put, put a, put a, put cash flow in the comments. Why not? Go. I love that. Yes. Okay. Let's, let's just, it's have some fun here. So seller financing, I really, really love. So at first I'm going to talk about how to get seller financing, have them agree to it because a lot of sellers don't understand it. They understand they can make a lot more money. They under, they don't understand that it's not safer than just putting the money in, like sitting in a bank, you know, and having it gain 0%, 0, 0, 0, 0.001% interest. Um, they don't understand it. And the thing is, a lot of times if they have agents or they're, they're, they're broke Uncle Joe, they think they're telling them, they're telling them that's dangerous because they, they, they don't understand it, right? So it's, it's really a matter of educa educating that seller of what the options are. But here's the thing that if you get one thing out of all this, I, if you're talking to an off-market seller, so you're face-to-face, -face, never say the word seller and financing together. If you get that, you can say seller, you can say financing all you want. Just don't put those two words together because they go back into what they, what the little that they know of and instantly go to fear because they don't understand it, right? So we'll, 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 we'll word ninja it ninja make sure i said that for pronunciation we'll, we'll uh, wordsmith it so it makes sense and then they see the benefit of of what we're doing okay so we're going to talk about what to say to sellers what, what's off market if it's so there's no agents involved like it's not on that's what i mean by that and also what how do we get seller financing when you're dealing with an agent when you when you have an agent and that agent has to explain to the seller's agent how this is going to work. And the seller agent has to explain to the seller, how's that going to work? How do you maneuver that? How do you make that happen? You know, so that's, that's kind of what it is. Um, what we're going to talk about. And the cool thing is all of this stuff, this is not, I didn't create any of this stuff. I didn't do any of this stuff. I, I, I learned from people that were miles ahead of me and I kind of put, and I made it my, I made it my own, right. My own, my own little, how I, how I tell people certain things, but I I've had, so many instructors and so many people that are that are in the community that are that are literally teaching us how to do all this stuff. This is how I didn't I didn't know anything at all, and I just grabbed a little bit from this instructor, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and I put it together and made my own Jared. So you need to make your own April, your own Wade, your own Dave, and make you know and make something that that's going to be awesome to really just make things pop. So, okay, let's get let's get into brass tacks. Okay, I'm very good at tangents, by the way. So. I may go on a few of those. FYI, warning, tangent warning. It's all right, we'll have to talk about yet, Jared. Get to yeah, it. We love yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If someone says Star Wars, I'm, I'm gonna be talking about that for the next 45 minutes. So, anyways, okay. Um, so Maylee, it's your job to keep me on on track. But you throw something at me, screen or, or yell at me or something. Okay. Okay. All right. When you, so off market deals, right? It's someone going through some sort of challenge, right? If whether it's going through divorce, foreclosures, bankruptcies, um, they're evicting someone and the tired landlords, uh, or they just want to sell, the, like, like, for example, the one working with Mitch and Mailey, uh, these people, they got a new job in Texas. And so they need to sell the property quickly. They don't have a lot of time to sit in the market. And so they were definitely, it, they needed, there was a need. So they had a need to sell their property and, and, and do it quickly. So finding people that, that are going through some challenges, right? That, that have a, a challenge and then we offer them a solution. I can't tell you how many times I've, I've talked to people and other investors literally turned them down because they didn't understand, they, did, they only had one funnel, one way to, to, to fix their problem. And if that, pro if that way didn't fix it, then it couldn't help them. While those that are educated and have understand the whole grasp of different things, we, we have, our tool belts are full, like, the average, the average investor has one or two tricks. I got six. I can just throw out there. So I'm glad they're out there because they make me look great when I actually talk to the to the to the sellers. Phenomenal. Okay, so when you're having the conversation with the seller, the biggest, the most important part is not the pitch. 
on average, so when I'm when I'm talking to a seller, I'm usually on, on either on the phone or with them for about an hour on average is what else. Sometimes it's shorter, sometimes it's a lot, they get a little talkity, be a lot longer. And so um, the most important part of getting someone to say yes to seller financing is, is the discovery. That is the most important part that you need to discover their true pain points because you have to put it into their, their perspective. They're not going to be very truthful to you at first on average. And now, and I don't blame them either when I'm sitting in front of someone and they're going through these, these hard times and they've dealt with other maybe potentially other investors that have, you know, promised in the world, they didn't, they couldn't perform. And so they're a little bit hesitant when I come to the table, they're hesitant because and put it so if, we're, if I'm helping someone that's going through foreclosure, for example, because that's a very, it's a, it's a very abundant lead source. You need to put yourself in their spot for a minute, okay? Imagine a world, and if anyone has has gone through this, you know, let's let's just put some hearts in the comments. Imagine a world where you're you're about to lose your home, and guess what? If you're behind in, on your mortgage payment, you're behind in everything else too. So you're probably worried about your car getting repossessed. You're probably parking your car three blocks down and walking home because you want, you don't want them to find the car to repossess it. And you're getting calls five times an hour of debtors, whether that's the house or, or others. Okay. I've, I've gone in conversations with, with, with sellers and the spouses didn't even know that they were in this type of trouble. Those are tough conversations to have guys. So you need to, Make sure that we're not just dealing, we're, yes, we, we're trying to buy a house, but we're fixing a human problem. So you need to go in it and add it in a human, as a human. You can just throw a number out there. If you go at it and you're just like, hey, I want to get this deal. Here's my number. There you go. Let's make something happen. You're going to get, you might get some yeses. You might be, if you want to play the numbers game, absolutely. Go ahead and do that. But if you're there and you actually show if you genuine curiosity, and generally, generally you want to help them, you're gonna you're gonna have a lot more yeses. You're gonna have a lot more better experiences. And and I have a ton of testimonials of sellers that have just been tickle pink because because I was able to to help them, you know. And so, with that mindset, and and asking more questions. So like I said, I'm there for like an hour, but my discovery phase is like 45 minutes. And they are talking more. So you need to be asking questions. We need to discover two things. If you don't know, the, and they have to be the truth, two things. If you don't know these two things, you will not get the deal, the deal you want. You will not get the, you might get lucky, who knows, but you're not going to get what you want. Like I'm, I'm, I'm telling you right now, and you're not going to help them down. get what they want. Write this well, down. Right, right, yeah. Put down two things in the comments if you want me to tell you the two things, okay? So th these two things are, Thank you. See, we already got people writing it down. Awesome. The two things they are is what they're running, what they're running away from. So the stick, their their challenge. And you might think you know what it is, but it's, you probably don't. And what they're running towards. So what are they? What they don't want to happen, and what do they do want to happen? And the thing is, like, okay, well, they're going for foreclosure, so I know they don't want that to happen. Yeah, sure. That's fine. Oh, and they want to make, they want to get their equity. They want money. So I know those things already from day one. No, 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 no. That's, that's the product. Your, your, your emotion. You need to talk to them emotional. If them losing them home, if them, them losing them home, if, and you don't have to speak good grammar either guys, trust me. If they're losing their home, right? It's not just losing their home. What does, how does that affect them emotionally? How does that affect them as a family unit? That's what you need to know. That's where they're running away from. Not just losing their home. That's surface. That's service level, guys. If you want to be closing more deals, you cannot be service level. You cannot. So you need to get it and ask questions about like, so for example, if I'm talking with Maylene, she's losing her home and, and, and she, and we already, you know, we, it, the cat's out of the bag. We know where she's going through foreclosure. She gets to sell a house in two weeks. Otherwise she loses the house. And, and if you do this wrong, you can really screw things up. Okay. When you're asking questions, you need to say it pacing and in a, in a genuine concern tone or curiosity tone, your tonality will change everything. So if I say like, so if you don't do anything now, 
what'll what'll happen? Well, I, I'll, I'll well, I'm gonna lose my home. It, and uh, I mean, that sounds terrible. I mean, what, what would what would happen if you lost your home? Like, can you tell me a little more about that. And then they'll start going into it. Like, well, I would just, you know, we'd have to pack up the kids and like, oh, oh, the kids. Well, how would they take it? And and if you're if you're not sincere and you're not having the right tonality, they'll be like, oh, well, how how are your kids gonna take it? You know, they're they're gonna take it the wrong way and they're gonna shove you out the door. But you have to be sincere and and genuinely curious, like like concerned. Of all. Concern is the better tonality for it, right? So what will happen with your kids? And and like, oh well, I mean, they would they'd probably change schools. Like, oh, I mean, how would that oh, that'd be pretty hard for them, wouldn't it? I mean, would that be hard for them? They put your hand over your heart because they know that's it's it's a it's a physical, it's a the body language of being sincere. Like that, that'd be hard for them too. What how would that affect your relationship with your with your wife if this stuff happened, and, and your and your kids and as so I'm talking, I'm asking about the relationships. I'm asking about, and and they're going to lead me on the path they need to go. If you're if if you're listening, so if they're saying things and you just like tell me more about that, or how would that make you feel? You need to use the word feel and affect your your emotional state. Like you need to not not what do you think? It's how do you feel about that? Because people buy and sell off of emotions. They don't logic doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's emotions, hundred percent. And I know I'm not saying anything about seller financing yet, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if you guys get this down and the guys that actually are watching the same classes that I'm watching, they understand this. Yeah. So I'm telling you guys, if you don't, under, if you, you can get through this, if you can get there below surface level, you will, you can make any deal work. I promise you. And what, if you what don't class are you watching Jared. Oh my gosh. Okay. So um, Real Estate Sales by James, James Massey is probably one of the biggest ones in this in this arena. The the um, subject to and seller financing, how how he wordsmiths the the language and how he pitches seller financing, it just freaking blows blows my mind, right? So those those two classes alone, and maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's Brian Sump, right? Yeah. So uh, Brian Sump, yes, he's the subject to, and then Jay Massey is the, uh, uh, the the Real Estate Sales, which is if anyone's not watching real estate sales with Jay Massey. Put up, stop where you're watching now and watch that class first. Like, trust me, that dude's like word, a word magician. Amazing. Anyways. So if you get that and you're below surface level, right? So you're there, you're building a gap of where they think they are or where they're at and where they need to be. Cause here's the thing. Sometimes not every seller. Sometimes it's bad luck and they get in those situations. A lot of other times is because they just make those people, the, per, the person in that situation is has made a lot of bad decisions, right? So they might not, because they're so used to making these type of decisions, they might not realize how big of a trouble or how, how big of a, a problem they're actually in. And so that's why a lot of times it actually goes through the entire foreclosure process because like it doesn't hit them until like, oh, well, tomorrow I don't have a place to live anymore. Does that make sense? So you really have to build that gap. And even if they understand that, even if this had bad luck, they lost a job or whatever, you need to build that gap. And that's what those questions are all about. When you're going below the surface level and you're asking emotional questions, how does it make you feel? How does it affect your relationships? How does that affect your, you know, uh, your, your, how does it affect how you feel about yourself? Maybe, you know, and again, you have to be very careful because that can be to come across extremely rude. So you have to really practice on the tonality, right? That is crucial. So now that we find out of, of what they're running away from, they're running away from losing their home. They're running away from th that wrecked relationship of, of them not feeling like the provider that they want to feel like. Guys, especially from, from a, as a mad perspective, as a provider in that situation, that, that like the worst feeling in the world. I, I almost guarantee it. And even, even a mother, like they, they're, they're, nature and everyone's a little different right but I'm, I'm generalizing here but even as a mother situations like they they want to nurture and and protect their 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 family and if they don't have a home they can't do that so it's more than just losing a home it's just more than losing equity right so now that we we really got went through deeper questions and you can always ask like tell me more about that that's a great one um brian sub he talks about he says you need to be a pig a professional information getter is what he says and I, I, when he were, I, I wrote that down, almost got it tattooed on me, but I don't, I don't do tattoos, but yeah. So I'm a pig. 
and professional information getter. And so I would even repeat the last three words they say, and that'll get more information to you. Like, so yeah, so I mean, we had a tough time. We had some medical bills, lost my job. Oh, you lost your job? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I got, when I got hurt, medical bills were, you know, I couldn't go to work. And so, you know, medical bills are piling up. Oh, medical bills are piling up. And then I, then you shut up. Silence is another key thing. I, this is all important, guys. This is, this is the part of the steps to get seller financing. You have to get this down. So if you don't know, this is like the service level. Like this is service level that I'm telling you as far as all the steps that are. You, guys, if you haven't watched those classes, watch them. Trust me. Um, so just repeating the last few letters and just the silence, silence is your best friend because you feel awkward. It feels awkward. And with anyone that knows me, like so I, I'll just, when I get going, I'll just, so it was a challenge for me to get that. Right. So I was just like, just, Oh, medical bills. And I'm just like, like looking them in the eye, like, and just like, Oh, and I'm, I'm leaned in I'm, I'm with them. And they'll start telling me the stuff. They'll start telling me more, right? Until we get that. And like, okay, great. So now I'm looking for, now I know that the, the, the stick, what they're running away from. Now, what, what are they running? What are they, what are they, what, uh, what are they running towards? You don't got to know words, people, or talk good. It doesn't matter. It's fine. What are they running towards? What do they want to get? I was like, okay, so, so Mr. Seller, I mean, uh, um, assuming we, we, you know, obviously when we come up with the price and, and the terms that make sense for you and for me, and we're both happy um, and we're able to sell the property the exact time frame you need, what, what would you, what does that look like for you? The ideal scenario. And they'll say, well, I mean, I've, I've sold to sell the property, but then I would, you know, have enough to pay the truck. Oh, pay your truck. What, what do you, tell me more about that. And so, oh, well, yeah, I, I mean, the truck payment's kind of killing me. It's, it's 600 bucks a month or whatever. So yeah, if I didn't have that, that'd be great. Oh, really? Well, what else would you, what else would you do with that? With the, with the money you're hoping to get. And so I'm finding out what they're planning to do with the money. Because if I say, Hey, we're going to sell our financing. Like, so I'm not going to get my hundred thousand dollars right now. Well, well, no, well, I need it now. But if you're asked those questions beforehand, you already know they only need $15,000 to pay off the truck. That's it. The rest would sit in the bank because you've already asked those questions. You preemptive know you already know what they're planning to do with the money by the time you even bring up seller financing. So you so you need to you get where I'm coming with guys. You're 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 priming the pump. All of this is to get to the question, and you're gonna ask it in a way where they're gonna feel silly to say no. Even if it's a low, even if it's not seller financing, but it's like, geez, that's a hundred thousand dollars less than I was I was hoping, but man, that makes sense. Let's do it. figure that out. Like, like watch these classes and you can figure this out guys. Like you can piece it together. It's, it's there. It's there. It's not even, you don't have to piece it together. It's just there. Okay. All right. Well, so let's, now let's say, talk about that. So people's emotions, right? People buy on emotion Yes. and they don't even know sometimes mm -hmm. how they feel. They don't even right. know that that's all that's important to them until you bring it to their attention. Right. They yep. don't even, they've come up with this magical, mythical version of how something should go down because that's what they've seen on TV. That's what their friend told them. That's what somebody told them. And so, or they've only sold a house maybe once that other, you know, a traditional financing way. So it's so important, right? To do exactly what you're saying, which is you're, you're pulling out all the reasons why they could possibly say one, no to you. <laughs> so you would know. Yeah. Right. They yeah. can't say no to you now. Right. <laughs> like, I love it's really that. Hard. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, and now, you know, all of their objections, you know, every reason why they could or could not say no to you. I love that. Beautiful. Keep a hundred percent. And so again, it's, it's, just, it's just getting below service level of what they want. So great. If you were able to pay off your truck and, and not have those, those feelings where, you know, you, you feel like kind of a, you know, having those troubles with your kids and, and worrying about where they're going to go and you're able to, you know, have money to go to place and pay off the truck. How would that make you feel? Hmm. You know, and like, oh well, I mean, you're great. Well, tell me more about that. What do you mean, great? Like, wh like what? Like how? Well, I mean, I would feel like you know, at least the thing is behind me. You know, I'm not worried about this truck payment. I'd have money to get into our next apartment. Oh, really? And, and how much do you think it would take you to kind of you know pay off the truck and then maybe move you know moving expenses and get over and start a new a new lease? 
we'll prime you with a five thousand, another fifteen thousand for for the truck. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, that, that's that's about what I would think it would cost too. So now they're telling me what they need, their, what the prices are. They're telling me. Okay. Ah. So I find out what their costs are, what what they're going to put the money in. Okay. So now and now and like now I know what's going to make them feel like the, the relief. They're gonna they're not going to have they they know that eventually they can rebuild their credit instead of this more instead of the foreclosure happening. They have this have a couple of late payments and the whole world is different now because we're able to help them. Okay. So there's a couple of different ways how I start it. So after I understand. I really like that. Can I break in for a second? Sure. I really like that. It's basic sales 101. Back when I used to knock doors for a living, do door to door sales, we were taught to spend the first 20 minutes unloading the gun and then they could never point it at you again. Right. So, right. Yeah. Plain no, and simple. It, it, bring, up, bring up their objections before they bring them up to you. Mm-hmm. And they won't have those objections anymore. Spend 20 minutes right. unloading the gun and they won't point it at you the rest of the spell. 100%. Right. You're, you're, you're right on. So when, I, when I'm about to pitch, depending on, on what their needs are, right? If, if during the, the, the conversation, we start talking about, you know, like maybe they have a ton of equity. And so they'll maybe they worry about a tax potential challenge. And so I'll say to them, so yeah, I can. And my notebook is a very powerful tool when I'm there physically. Okay. I, I have, I, I'm writing things down and, and I use it as a tool. And so I will, I usually give them a cash offer first, very low. That still makes sense. I'm not just low balling them. Like you're still gonna walk away. You're fix this problem, but I'll say, uh, uh, yeah, I can, there's a couple of different ways. I mean, I have some different options for you. I mean, is it okay if we talk about different, different ways of how we can help you so you can, you know, avoid this foreclosure and, and actually, you know, get to a place where you could buy your truck and, and, you know, move on. Would that be okay? So now they know we have some different options. And so I'm like, let me, now that I've seen the property, let me just do a little numbers real fast. And, and, and I already, I already know the answer, by the way, I already know the answer. So let me do some numbers real fast. And I'll sit there and I'll start. And this is, this is from, uh, this is not mine, by the way. I, I learned this from this other, the other instructors. This, this is Chris Alvitz in, in a deal of the decade. He says the deal, the, the saying is amazing. The deal of the decade happens once a week. If you know where to look, he ain't lying. Okay. All right. So I would use, so I would like to sit there and I'd just start doing math and I need my calculator and my phone and it's silence. So what's happened with them? They're, they're starting to like, they're they're processing everything we've talked about. We're we're going through it, right? So they had a moment to kind of process everything, and like, oh, okay. So here's what I can do for you. This is good. So I can give you um, an offer in cash, and we can close just before you know at this date because we already talked about dates and everything like that, right? So for one hundred and ninety seven thousand eight hundred thirty two dollars and forty five cents, I am a spot on. And I'm like reading it off a calculator, like, or, or as I'm telling them, I'm like writing down from the calculator to the piece of paper. So it, it's, it's a real number. And also I'm anchoring them into a lower point. So now it's just like, Hey, this, this thing, it's just like stores just do this to us all the time with anchoring prices. Hey, this, this, uh, this drink used to be $3 and now it's only one or now it used to be, now it's only two. If I sell this drink for two dollars, I'm like, dude, that's really expensive for a drink. But I was like, oh, but it, I mean, it's better than three. So I'm anchoring them to a lower price point before I bring them seller financing. Okay, so now they're like, okay, two hundred ninety. Oh, man, that's kind of. And we're in Utah right now, guys. So if those are across the country, you may be like two hundred thousand. That's crazy. And some in California, like that's like cheap. Are you kidding me? So just for you know, put the example in your own areas, right? So I, I'd say I'm offering the one ninety seven. And, and it's something that won't work for him, potentially. It might, great, awesome, let's do it. So like, oh man, I, I just can't do that because we, we, we had to do this, this, and this. Like, oh yeah, I totally get it, you know? And I'll, I'll even do the pendulum thing where like, before I even say the offer, the cash offer, I'm like, gosh, you know what? I I do, my numbers say this number here. I, I'm not sure if you're, I don't think you're gonna like it. You're probably gonna think I'm, I'm just lowballing you. And, and uh, you're, I am projecting and so when I, when I give them a certain, uh, when I, I give them something, this is from, uh, uh, Renata's, uh, excuse me, real estate sells. It's a pendulum effect. If I say this house is beautiful, 
like, oh, no, it's crap. If I say, oh, this is a terrible house, why would you want to live here? Well, that's actually, it's a really nice house. I, I love it here. It's the opposite of what I say. So if I'm saying like, oh, this is not, I think you're going to like it. You might think if I, if I, if my, if their objection they might have is like, I'm just trying to lowball them. I want you to think like it's a lowball, but this is kind of my numbers, but we can talk about other ways you might be able to get a little higher. Is that okay? And so I'll give them an offer, right? And then now, now when it's time for seller financing, I'm like, you know what I can do? Um, I, I think I can, because there's certain ways you can do it, depending on what they're talking about. They're worried about taxes, like I said before. Um, you know, there's a way we can do this. And and you mentioned earlier, you know, I asked you about, you know, what, what you thought about if you talked to your CPA about the kind of tax situation. Can I, do you want to pay like a lot of taxes or, or, or maybe just a little bit? So what are they going to say? Well, well, I don't pay a lot. I just pay the, the lower amount. Oh, oh, I gotcha. So here, here's what we do. So I, I'm no tax expert. You know, I'm not CPA, nothing like that. And I know you guys are going to go check on this. I, I know you're not, you're not, you're not just taking my word for it. You're, you're check with your local, you know, your local tax guy. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm not pretending I'm a tax expert people because you get yourself a big trouble if you start telling people tax advice when you're not a CPA, okay? But, and I'll say like, oh, you know what? So with with your current equity we have, if 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 you, as far as I understand, I know people when they when they sell their property and, you know, especially like investing like this one is like for you, um, they have to pay you know, a lot of taxes and they're in the entire tax bracket. Um, what we can do to lower those payments, I can, I can buy it. Um, for even even more than my, my original cash offer, but we would do it in payments. And so that way you're actually only getting taxed on what I pay you instead of the actual full amount. So then you're you're usually in a lower tax bracket. Does that make sense? Would that be something to be interested in? And so now that now that I'm like talking about the tax bracket, right? And and the, and then also, even before I should ask that question, it, it was like, so we can I'll do this in payments so that we can stop what they're running away from so we can stop what you're running away from so that you can actually pay off your truck and and do and do x y and z so i am i'm bring, i'm sandwiching in the 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 number between their pain point and what they're getting from so i, I can actually give you an offer where you know to avoid all of these pain points that you said da, 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 you know, we can do it in payments and I'll, and I can even go higher, like a $225,014 and 13 cents, but I'll do it in payments. So, so you can actually can move on. And, and my down payments would be big enough to pay off that truck. It's going to pay off the, so give you the moving expenses. And so now they're, they're going over, like it's everything they need in this current moment, right? And then and there. So it's sandwiched, sandwiched between pain and, and, and sound and, and pleasure, what they're shooting for. Does that make sense? And by the way, the less, this is probably why I'm so successful. The less smooth you are, the better. The less smooth you are, the better. If you mess up on the words, if you are, it, it's, it's okay. That's phenomenal. Because guess what? You're human and they, they'll relate to you more. And so as opposed to a, a smooth talking salesman that, that, talk, da, 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 okay, let me do this, this thing, you that. And like, uh, there's no, there's no connection there. There's no, it's just like, it, it's a salesman. Okay. Me messing up. It's phenomenal. So I, I'm, I'm a naturally good salesman because I mess up all the time. Okay. All right. So it, it's, it's okay to mess up and you actually want to, you want to put those mistakes in there. Uh, if you're, if you're really good at it, you want to put in those mistakes. So anyways, so that's just one way. Another, another way to do it is like the, the amortization calculator is your best friend is your best friend. Okay. If they're out, Asking price is 300 and the most I can do is like 200, okay? And in cash, right? Maybe 250 right around there. So we're like $100,000 off and I give my cash offer the, the 197 and they're like, yeah, I can't, there's just no way we can't even do that. That doesn't, that, that doesn't even pay off their, our debts or whatever. Oh yeah, I, I, I totally get it. You know, you're, you're asking for, for 300,000. Um, would you be opposed if, if we can, if there's a way I might be able to give you like, like 350, would that be something you, you want to hear about? And what do you think they're going to say? Hell yes. Yes. Tell me. They're going to say, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I mean, I, wait, you're offering me 200. Now you're saying potentially 350. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, t I totally get it. And if you're really, you know, get that, you know, they're bringing their pain point and then the pleasure, right? It's always, it's anchored. 
Those two points are your anchors. You're, you're talking about those all the time. Those are your anchors. You don't walk, a ship does not go far from their anchor. So those, those two points are your anchors when you're talking to people. That's why the discovery part is like 45 minutes for me. Cause I'm, I am like, I'm not, I'm getting to this. And there's so much rapport built in this that time. Like, I'm not saying a word about me, but when someone talks about themselves and then their emotions and their feelings, they, they naturally feel good, whether that's good or bad, they have that connection. And so they are, they are attaching those good feelings to me. Like Jared makes me feel good. So I have so much rapport at this point, just by asking all these questions. Okay. Not talking about my dog. Hey, how are you doing? No one believes you. No one believes you actually care about them. They don't. But when I'm asking about the question, they're telling me about them. They're like, okay, I don't know why. I know why, but they, they're going to say, I don't know why, but I like this guy. Okay. Anyways, back to the point. Um, so I built all this rapport, right? Um, what were we, oh yeah. So, so if, if it's over like 350, like, so you know what, you know how, like when you bought this house, you know, three years ago and uh, the mortgage statement came in and they had like, gosh, I mean, you bought this house for what was 150 or 250. And, and like at the end of it, you're paying the bank like 400,000. Isn't that crazy? Like, yeah, I know those banks are criminals. I, right. Would you like to do that to me? And they're like, wait, what? Yeah, I mean, so if I buy your property and, and you actually, you know, and I do it in payments and you, you would actually charge me interest. So you would get paid what the banks are getting paid. And if, if the roof leaks or whatever, it's my roof, you don't got to worry about that. Would that be something you'd be interested in? So that you, so that, and, and I'll make sure your down payment's big enough where you can pay off your truck and have enough moving expenses. Like, well, okay, that'd be, that'd be interesting. Okay, great. And if we're, as we're talking about the cash flows coming in, that what they'd be getting every single month, because people from like destitute, and now they're, there's like, oh, wait, this is getting a lot more than I thought. And I'm getting monthly checks every single month. And I'll ask them, like, so, so how long? I mean, you know, with your situation, you know, and getting up on your, on your feet, how long would you like to, let's just say that the checks that they'd be receiving is like, you know, 2000 bucks. How long would you like to receive those, those checks of $2,000? Do you think those checks would, would help you in, in your, in your situation? If you're getting $2,000 every single month? Well, yeah, it would. Like, oh, well, how long do you want to have those? Well, I mean like forever. Okay. I mean, what about 30 years? What do you think about that? Would that be okay? So I'm negotiating like the terms of the loan. I'm negotiating by, by an amortization calculator. I, I, I figured out the interest rate, which can get them there above their asking price. Does that make sense? And I'm doing this like right then and there, right? Amortization calculator, done, cool. It makes still makes sense in my numbers. I get that. Is this is this going over guys' heads or are we, are we good? I think I think we're going good, right? Okay. Um, I only have like, like seven minutes left and I do want to talk about a little bit of agents. But there's so much more, even objections. And I, there's so much more. You guys just need to get connected. To, there's so many the classes are, are are good. There's so many cool ways. Even if they're worried about you not making payments, it's any objection. By the way, so this is the common objection. I'll go over it, like two objections. Then I'll then I'll talk about realtors for five minutes. Okay. A common objection, like, well, what happens if you stop making payments? And by the way, any objection that if you make it like it's a big deal they will think it's a big deal. If you make it a little deal, they're not, they're going to think it's a little, it's nothing. So like, are you, I mean, what if you don't make any, if you stop making payments? Like, well, Mr. Seller, I, you validate that, you validate their concern first of all, whatever it is. You know, Mr. Seller, that's actually a really good question. I'm glad you asked that. And, and here's the thing, you know, with the down payment, so you can get your track, remember the anchor close to it, down payment, so you can actually pay for the track and get the closing expenses. And like we were talking about before, I'm putting in over like $60,000 just in rehab, just to fix up this property. I'm not necessarily in the business to shell out, you know, close to $100,000 of, of, of my company's money just to not make a $2,000 payment. And then, then I ask them a question that I move, move on. So, so I, I evaluate them, I address it and then ask a question or keep or move on. If they have more questions, they can, they can get into it. That's fine. But then it's like, oh, okay. You know? So like, I'm not, if anything, and then, then also they still have questions about that. Like, well, in reality, it, it's kind of a good thing. You know, the worst case scenario, you're actually gonna make more money. So if let's just say, you know, halfway through I put in, you know, I put in, you, you, you got the down payment. I'm starting making you payments and guess what? 
I, I, I start rehabbing and get a renter in there. And then I just, I just disappear um, a year into it. I, I go off to Mexico. So you, you can actually foreclose on the property if I stop making payments. And then you get to keep all the money I've already given you. And plus all the repairs I've done. And, oh, you have a paying tenant now. So worst case scenario, you want me to default in this loan. You'll make more money if I do that. And if you don't want to rent here, you can just sell it again. And you're getting all the equity. So yeah, you the best thing for you is for me to stop making payments. Do you see it's kind of hard for them to say no to something like that? No, that's good. That's really yeah. Good. So the other thing too is with someone that's in that situation, they always say, I just want to bring up objections, right? That yeah. Everybody... yeah. Oh, well, well, what about the due on sale clause? For a subject to for a subject to deal referring to, right? Yep. Absolutely. So they're talking about the due on sale clause. If if uh basically it means if the, the seller property happens, but the loan's still there, and in 99% of loan of a mortgages that has a due on sale clause, which means that if they sell the property. Um, they have the right to call the due, the note due. They can say, "All right, now you got to pay us all up front." Um, in our in my years, you're like, "That's a great question." You know, I get that question quite a bit. And the thing is, like, what what are the banks really after? And I ask them that question, like, "Well, what do you mean? Like, well, what do they what? Why do they give you a loan? Why do they why do they do this? Why is, what's their business? Well, interest. So they want they don't want a house, right? They don't want to own a property. Well, no, not really. So they want the interest payments, right? Like, absolutely. I agree with you. And in, in my years of doing this, and even my 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 mentors of doing this, I've, I've never seen them actually pull uh, a, 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 a do one sell clause. I mean, I'm sure it has happened, but if it's the way that we're doing it, we're actually protecting ourselves in, in multiple fashions. And, and here's the cool thing is like, if we're making those payments, they don't, they don't care. They just want their payments. And, and let's just say in a scenario where the do and sell clause happens, um, that's my problem, not yours, because it's my property and I have to either sell it at that time or refinance it. That's none of, that's that's no skin off your back. Because it because it, it's it's the loan. If they call do on sell clause, they'll take over the property and you're you're still the same situation. All right. You're or excuse me, you're you're you'll be you'll be just fine because you already had you we paid you all the equity, and that's a, my problem to deal with. So if even the bank does call call the note due. You know, we have multiple exit strategies where we can take care of that, but uh, it it doesn't really affect you guys. Does that make sense? And oh, so, yeah. like, oh, okay, great. Because it's not even like a foreclosure. It doesn't show up as a foreclosure. It's not, it's just a, a do on sell. So we would have to, we'd have a certain amount of time to refinance or do whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's that's a great question. But the thing is, I don't I don't know if that comes up a lot unless other than dealing with investors though, right? Because they, most, most uh, mom and pops just don't, or average Joe doesn't understand that. Now, a quick few things with with agents if you're if you're working with on the market stuff and right now you can find more seller financing deals on the market than you can at like almost any of the time that I've been been you know that I've that I've known of in the last like 10 years right the reason why interest rates are so high and there's so many people that have low interest mortgages right so people aren't buying as fast as they used to so the first step is is you need to make sure that your agent knows what they're doing and that they understand seller financing like they've done seller financing deals themselves. So for example, Maylee, if if I'm dealing with agents, I'm gonna use Maylee because she knows seller financing. She understands it because that that breaks the bridge of people not understanding it. So Maylee will be able to understand and and to explain it to the 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 seller's agent and how it's gonna benefit them. How it's gonna benefit them and their seller, they're gonna make more money. And when you're dealing with agents, always say, always put it in your offer, put it in a letter, doesn't matter. Any and all down payments will be big enough for all commissions. Write that down. Any and all down payments will be bigger, will be big enough to pay all commissions. I know that, oh, we don't care about, yeah, they, they, they do. I don't care. Mainly cares about her commission and she should. Right? That they care about, if they, if they say they don't, they're, they're they're lying. They're lying. They wouldn't, they wouldn't, they're not doing it for free people. So if I, if I say, oh yeah, yeah, all commissions, we're make sure. And I make sure like upfront, like if I'm starting time with creative financing, I'm like, don't worry, man. All your commissions will be taken care of. And I'll even just try to like have them represent if I'm, if I'm just, cause I, I haven't had my license in, in like a, about two years, but I, I, if I'm dealing with one agent, 
it's on the market, I'll just contact that that the seller's agent too. And I'll say like, hey, you know, I'm not represented in this deal. I mean, would you like to represent me too? Oh, okay. That's double commissions. All right. They don't care about commissions. Oh, yeah, yeah. They care. They care. And so now this guy's on my side. I'm like, yeah, dude, don't worry. Like, And then a, a lot of times you can have like, because this is kind of confusing. I don't want, I mean, it's okay if we like to jump on a three-way phone call. A lot of agents really, really hate that. But if you're like, if you show them like, hey, listen, I, I don't want their phone number. I'm not going to talk to them afterwards. But if we can even jump on a three phone call or even, you know, meet in, in or for a lunch or something on my, on me, I would love to explain how this can get them an extra hundred thousand dollars and, and answer their questions real life time instead of having the phone game. So I'll, I'll, I'll getting a, a meeting doesn't work, happen every, all the time, but getting a meeting with the sellers is then, then you're on the same path. Like what's their pain point? What's their, and you're talking to them about this stuff and like how, and then you answer their questions and the whole time. If, especially when the agent's there, you are validating the agent every 10, every 10 sentences you're validating them. Oh yeah. And Bob, like he, he understands the interest rate that goes up and then below. I, you just like, he's the best dude in the world or she's the best girl in the world. She knows her stuff. Oh yeah. You are so lucky you got her. You are, oh man, I can't because other agents, they wouldn't even, they wouldn't even think about this, but they, they don't think about the, 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 the clients as much as he does. You know, I am just like buttering this guy up, like, like, and I'm not talking to him. I'm talking to about him in front of him to other people. That is powerful. If you want to butter someone up, that's the way to do it. So now he is 100% on my side. An agent will kill a seller financing deal in a heartbeat. But sorry. Okay. I kind of went on a bunch of tangents. I still want to leave some time for, uh, for questions, but does anybody or mainly what, what, uh, we got some, we got some go. questions in the chat. Um, so I will kind of just start back at the top here for a second. Um, so one of the questions is, um, what would you say? That's a question. Okay. So this is what they're asking you, what you would say in this scenario. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, method sales conversation standard for acknowledgement. Ignore. Oh, let's see. That wasn't yours, David. Actually, David, why don't you come off mute real quick? You had your question. Let's see if only matters. Nope. There's so many in here that I'm trying to go through them, but go ahead and uh, David Kine, if you wanted to come off mute and ask your question, go ahead. Yeah, so it was just my understanding that um, capital gains only applies if the property is an investment property, correct? Uh, yeah, for the most part, yeah. So it depends. So using the tax, again, so that, that tax pitch, it depends on the situation. Because like I said, you're already digging through all the stuff. You have to sort of discover, right? So it's not just an average, this is the home they're living in, they're losing now. And it could be like, this is an investment property. This is a property, maybe the maybe it's a, a probate that they had that's already been transferred to their name. So it's no longer probate. And they still have this. So there's a lot of things. And, and you can even, how do I put this? You can be wrong on certain things, but you want to be, give, if you, you want to be, no, how do I, how do I phrase that? So, you want to put it so it makes sense to the scenario, right? So yeah, that's a good, good, good comment. I'll leave it at that. Yeah, and you have to realize too. And I, I, I'm not an accountant or a tax advisor, but right. I want to say if, as a couple, they would make more than two hundred fifty thousand for the year by selling the property, then they are subject to capital gains. So well, that's it, it would put them in even, cool. even without capital gains, it'll at least put them in the higher tax bracket. So I always right. talk about that tax brackets, yep. and that's something that that yep. most people understand. Like, like, oh yeah, make more money, pay more taxes. So it's yeah. like, yeah, if you're if you're making, you know, 40 grand this year and now you're next year, you make, you made 200 grand. How much is your tax burden now? Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying what's going to happen. I'm asking them and they're telling me the numbers. Anything that you say is, a, is not true. If they say it's true in their eyes. Yeah. So if I'm asking them how much, how much do they need to move as opposed to like, oh yeah, you probably need what, like 5,000 to move. If they would have said 5,000, like, yeah, that's how much you need. Like, well, no, bald guy. I don't actually need more than that. Yeah. You know, that, that makes sense. I'm, I'm averaging $12,000 a month right now. And my tax burden is over $10,000 for the year already. See? So, yeah. And still increasing. <laughs> what, Sorry, one of the, Go ahead. One of the things that I found, um, and I actually found it out through, Helping with my dad's, um, I was taking care of him, helping with his uh, stock accounts. And 
it helped me on this last seller finance deal is that um, it was an investment property that I'm purchasing. And when I sold some stocks for my dad and I was just transferring them over to where we could have um, stocks that paid dividends instead so that we could have income to help take care of him. I, um, a couple of things. So uh, the most important thing was that my accountant didn't rebase them. So we ended up paying a ton of taxes on selling them and then purchasing other stocks. But what I didn't know as a secondary effect was that it decreased his social security by $300 a month and it wouldn't reset for another two years. So when, so say somebody, an older person has an investment property and they, they end up taking the money for whatever reason instead of you know 1031 uh, instead of putting it into something else and they're taking it because they're older um that they could also impact their social security amount that they're getting and so um right that's a good that's a really good pitch and and the thing is what you can do in the scenario because we we gotta be careful on, on the advice that we're giving so i would say something like oh i know i know a friend of mine um she when she sold when when like she sold some stuff from, and I'll tell your story, right? And and they 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 made a lot of money, but then actually it it, it decreased their social security by three hundred dollars for like two years. Mm-hmm. I mean, so you're not giving I, what I did stories, right? Or, or yeah, just, what you know I, I mean? did is I told the real estate agent and I said mm-hmm. they might want to check into it with their accountant sure. and see if that's something that would affect them because it did affect me sure and that's how I went about it I didn't I wasn't dealing directly with the owner and um, and absolutely you can you can be saying things like uh you know I already know you're gonna check with your guy you probably looked into this but you know I know someone that actually they they got the extra two hundred thousand dollars and actually de- reduced their social security by three hundred dollars and you told me you're, you're li- that's all you're living on right now I mean I, I mean did you look into that already and like as a well, concern and then, and then that conversation, even with, you know, with an agent, if you're writing a letter or whatever, then, then it's like, oh, well, I mean, uh, no, no, we haven't, you know, assuming they have already looked into it, right. The pendulum, they've already looked into the, oh, you have, oh, really? Oh no. You know? And so then we're like, oh, so what would, if you did, if you were in a similar situation, like my, my friend, how would that affect you guys? Would you guys be okay if it, if it did happen like that? Well, I mean, it would be tight. Oh, what do you mean tight? And so you're just getting more. Yeah. So you're painting the picture for them, but that's great. Telling stories is phenomenal. That's why it's so important to be part of the community. So you're hearing stories like this. This is a phenomenal one. I'm going to use this by the way. So you're hearing stories like, like, uh, is, 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 I know it's the first name of the coach, but, but coach, so coach Rowe is it, we're, we're, we're going to hear stories. We're going to get all the stuff. And then, then I can use that. And are you being truthful? Like I really hurt. Like this is what I was told. I don't know. I mean, you're going to check your own tax guy or whatever. Yeah. But. Yeah. But then you're not the bad guy. That's key, right? Like how we position ourselves. Like you said, it's very important that we're not the Mm -hmm. person. We're not the tax guy. We're not the, we don't know anything about anything other than we just have stories that we know. And the stories are legit. You know, I wouldn't make up stories that couldn't come true. I wouldn't make up something that, you know, find stories that actually fit the community, fit the situation you're in and then leverage because stories sell. They just right. absolutely feel, felt found, well, right? They they can they'll, they'll put it, they'll put themselves in that story. Like, Oh wait, yeah, that like, that makes sense. Like, yeah, if you make more money, then they're going to reduce my, my social security. Okay. Yeah. That does make sense. Yep. Or like, they're like, maybe they're on food stamps. Like, Oh man, that would destroy my food stamp. They wouldn't give me food stamps anymore or whatever it is. Right. You know, but yeah. Okay. Okay, what other so questions Roxy has a question um let me pull this back up or actually Roxy you want to come off mute or I can just read your question that you had hi Jared how are you hey what's up Roxy <laughs> so when you were because t- well, I, I have a situation right now half uh negotiating a seller finance deal and this lady has a mortgage so when you were talking about okay you know you're gonna get two thousand dollars per month but if, if it were the case that they have a mortgage and they mm-hmm. don't really gonna get a two thousand, well, Maybe. what can, how do you solve that part? So, you know? what what are their pain points and what and what what are they running? What are they what's what's their sticking carrot? That that's my question to you. If you can find out what their sticking carrot is and like more than just service level, mm-hmm. like I was talking at the very beginning, it doesn't. You can you can pitch that in a way where even if they're is how much equity is in the property that they would potentially walk away with even doing subject to 
Yeah, they have a lot of equity in the house, but they're losing the house as well because they own taxes on it. Right. Okay. So, so they have no equity, right? Okay. No, they have a, lot, a ton of equity. Oh, a ton of equity. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you can do like even a wraparound too, whether it's like where they are getting payments. So if they're, if you're going to make money at 300,000 and the mortgage is like 150 and they have 150 in, in equity, for example, and you're still making money at the 300,000 purchase price. Well, they're like, okay, do the amortization. How much would it? How much would they make on the 150? How much do they make on the 50? And you can do it. It's a subject to, it's a wraparound mortgage. So subject to with additional, again, guys, if you're, if you're not watching these classes, it's not, it's a lot. Yeah. you would, you will get yourself in trouble. If you just try to Google this and say, what's a wraparound subject to da, 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 and try <laughs> to do it. Oh my God, I can't tell you how many properties I picked up by, by YouTubers, by, by uh, YouTube university students that, or bloggers or, or podcasters that have, you know, they've, they've read half a Robert Kiyosaki book and they've, they've gotten to themselves in so much freaking trouble. But anyways, my whole point, like you just knowing those words is not going to get you there and, and good luck on the YouTube. But, um, but that's, that's the thing, right? So you can give them the payments in addition to that too. Right. So really, but they may not need payments though. Right. And, and I've negotiated plenty of times, but there's no payments for six months or no payments for, in fact, yeah, exactly. I negotiated a deal that mainly picked up. I wholesaled it. It was a fourplex, and there's no payments for the first four months. Is that the one I, I wanted? <laughs> Just kidding. No, no. Well, <laughs> the one you one you beat me on. Yeah, that was that we they got in contract yesterday. But uh, uh, she did, and I got her a discount, which is the craziest thing. The dude called her senior <laughs> discount. Oh yeah, they call her call saying, I got hey, I got you discount. I, I see <laughs> He's like, I think Roxy. Like we Roxy. I know a Roxy. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna get her. Okay. Now, anyways, but uh, uh, the cool thing is, where was I going with this? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, th so that well, I got it. So, if you, if you, I mean, if that the payment is not benefit, don't mention that, right? Just mention the, the, other things. The payment yeah. is not the benefit. Then you mention it's, what is the benefit for them. If I'm, right. if I'm, if I go to the store and I'm gonna buy, I need to buy a hammer to make this, make my shelf, okay? And there's a salesman trying to sell me all the features of this hammer because it hammers itself and it's light and it like and it, all the chicks will dig you i don't care about the hammer i care what the hammer can do for me they don't care about the sell of the property they care what that's what that that sell will do for them i care that i just want the shelf made so my wife stops yelling at me every single day and so that's what i care about that's my emotional attachment to this hammer so i need to buy a hammer to make the shelf to make my wife happy right i don't care about the hammer i care about my wife happiness and my ha my saying this because if I'll be quiet, I'll, I'll be silent. It'd be great. You get it? Same with them. They don't care about the payments. They don't care. They might care about what the payments can do for them. Right? They they might care about what what it, what it'll help them avoid. So that's why it's like, if you get to the the what they're the the carrot and the stick. Millions, millions, right there. No, I think that that's super valuable and keeping in mind too, like something that we've come up against multiple times when we've been doing deals is that there is always that gap, right? So if there's, you know, if you're trying to suggest a subject to, or you suggest some type of wraparound there, there has to be something in it for them. So if you're running your oh, numbers yeah. and you're like, okay, so the monthly payment and you're always running on the ARV, right? Or you're running the rent comps and you're going, mm -hmm. okay, the rent comp, the most we could possibly get for this property is $200,000 a month and your payment is $2,100 a month. Is this worth having a conversation? I don't know. But the truth is, is don't, don't stew on stuff that is not going to be worth your time. That's another yeah. huge valuable lesson that we've learned, right? Going through these is that, you know, you really should be doing a, be able to do quick math, right? Back, you know, we call it cowboy math. If you can run numbers really quick and just glance at stuff and be like, okay, I'm just going to use Zillow or, you know, Redfin or, you know, Rentometer or whatever, and be like, okay, if this is what they're saying is worth. I'll run the deep numbers later, but I'm going to just glance at the number and say, okay, what does Zillow think I could rent this property out for? What, you know, what yeah. do I think the mortgage payment on, and then do your math on your seller finance calculator, right? And if those numbers don't make sense, it's just not a deal. And, and move right on. There's hundreds of deals if you know what you're looking for that are right there on the MLS or not. Um, but you should be having these conversations with anybody that's been, the home has been on the market for more than 45 days. And if they've dropped the price, 
you absolutely should be having these conversations. Oh, yeah. And I love the Jared forces. I say that nicely, but I know how he does it. It's fantastic. He slightly suggests, um, motivates the agent to go, of course, you want me to talk to your seller. Because do you know anything about seller financing? I was on the phone with an agent, and this is no joke, on Tuesday this week. Uh, so yesterday. And it was a, for a friend. He's negotiating some stuff. And he's like, hey, she's been a great mentor to me. It's my broker. She is in the top 1% agent in all of Utah. I'm not going to name names here because you probably know her. And she's you know already made a million dollars this year in real estate. Like she is a boss. And I was like, okay, I like it. I, I already know who this is, but keep going, you know? And he's like, it would mean a lot to me if you could help me out with this deal. And I was like, okay, what's going on? He's like, well, she's trying to close on a seller finance deal with for a client, help her client into a seller finance deal, and she's never done one before. And I'm like, okay, uh, well, what does she need help with? Like, what's you know, what's the issue here? And he's like, well, I mean, out of she's closed and helped her agents, you know, she has like 150 agents on her team. Uh, she's closed thousands of transactions, and never once have they actually crossed the finish line. She's never closed on a seller finance deal. And I go, put her on the line. Let's go. Let's put, put her on the line, you know. And immediately I started talking to her. She's super sweet. She's great. She's way too wonderful to work with. But she's like, Maylee, I didn't know any of this. Like any of this, right? And this is like preliminary stuff, right? And I'm like, well, well, okay. Um, doesn't surprise me. I tried to be like, hey, you're not alone. You're, you're like all the other agents that I talk to. So don't get yourself too hard on yourself. You know, it's that I'm educated and this is my full-time job. Yes, I'm an agent, but my full, I'm primarily, a, you know, an, an investor. And she's like, oh, can you come teach a class? Right. So this whole thing started, but she's like, I've been to so many seller finance classes and I still never got it. And so what I, what I want to just leave with how many times did it actually take you to go through the motion, Jared, and actually write out the contract and Good actually question. write out the numbers and then actually make that phone call mm -hmm. and then go through the entire motion, not just half-ass it, right? The entire motion. How many times did it take you before you got into your first uh, transaction for seller financing specific? Because I know that's okay. different for. Right. So it, it takes time. I mean, it takes, it takes, it does take time and obviously what really helped me was, was building on the backs of, of, of great people. Right. So getting, getting the knowledge first. Yep. And so now I have like what to say, how to say it. So I, I got the education. I, I, I understand it. You know, I'm, I'm writing notes and I have a, a concept of it, but having that concept is different than actually performing it. Right. And so for me, I, I knew I was going to suck at first. This like the first time I knocked on, not mainly can tell you, the first time I knocked on a door, it was not very pretty. I, I, I was really nervous. I was probably talking a mile a minute. Like you already know I talk fast, but it was even faster when I was nervous. And so uh, uh, they, they were like, what? What? Like five times. Anyways. But I knew I was going to suck. And so I was literally, I was setting appointments up because I, I, especially at the time, I, I was like strictly off market stuff. I didn't want to deal with on the market. This is like six years ago. So Things were, things were still pretty crazy. And so uh, I would I would take appointments, I'd set appointments if they're even open to having conversation about, about buying, selling their home, even if they're like tire kickers or whatever. And I knew they would never be able to take my offer because maybe they were, my offer was like 150, they owed 350 and they were in no position to do a short sell, right? So I would still take those appointments because it was a practice. I knew I was going to, I was going to get good at it. I was just going to, I just, I just needed practice sitting in front of someone with my piece of paper and with my amortization calculators and with my, 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 I had my little, uh, I had a little bag, my little suit, kind of a fake suitcase thing. And it had like, like all the different contracts I needed. Cause if they want to say yes, I want like, you can sign right now. Like, you're not gonna, you're not gonna sit on it tomorrow and talk to your broke uncle, tell you a bad idea. It is well, the reason why he's broke. But so I don't know if there's a number, but at one point in time, I was taking like five appointments a day of just talking to sellers. And it was just, worse at, at a point it was just like oh, this is gonna suck you know but i got i got good at it and and i started getting like yeses like cash offers and like man you know it'd be cool if i didn't have to put any money in this thing it'd be cool if we didn't have to use my credit but okay how do we do that you know and so so watching the classes and just you don't gotta be a genius guys you have to be i'm a really good parrot key i can watch a class i can and then repeat it and phenomenal 
great. And again, you don't have to be perfect. You can stumble, you know, not say words right. That's fine. And that that actually helps you, like I said before. It's a long I, answer to your short question, but I don't know the exact number, but sure. I just took every opportunity I possibly could to get in front of someone. And I'm an introvert, whether you believe it or not. So it drained me every time I do that. You yeah. know, introverts can be extroverts. We just takes energy out of us instead of putting it into us. But when I say yes, I was I was hell energy. I'll tell you what. But yeah. um yeah. But I, think, but I guess the point of that question is just to say, you know, so many people get discouraged. I remember being discouraged. Um, you know, if you're making a bunch of phone calls and you're writing up the contract and you're you're doing the work and then you're still not getting a yes or the numbers just don't work, right? That's probably mm -hmm. what I kept finding was like, oh, in Utah right now, guys, it's hard. It's a it's a hard time to make numbers work for you know rent traditional rentals. Mm -hmm. um, so I do want to applaud you, by the way, on your last deal that we are working on with you. Um, and so, Friday. Uh, being creative, right? Learning yeah. how to be super creative in this market is so incredible. And so, yeah, let me tell you a little bit about this deal. So Jared did put this property under contract and negotiated it all. He made it all happen. He's going to take care of these people. And that's that's the most impressive part, right? And get them what they need. Um, and then still have a wholesale fee in there for him, which is first and foremost, the most important part. I do not want to hear from any of you that, oh, I'll, I'll, this is just learning experience. I don't need to get paid. Absolutely not. If you forget about yourself, you're forgetting about your household, your, your children, you're forgetting about why you started investing in the first place. So I don't want to hear that. Um, always pay yourself. Next thing though, is how important it was that you restructured something. So you saw this deal, you saw that the monthly payment was only going to give whoever was trying to buy this house, if you're going to wholesale it to them, only mm -hmm. $200 in cash flow, yeah. right? You saw that um, if you're going to traditionally rent this property out, that is, that's your margin. And that's a really slim margin. You know, our numbers is m minimum is $400 and that's after all the expenses, right? And so that wouldn't have been a deal for us um, or any of our students really that right. we work with. And so I love your creativity of being like, you know what, you could short term rental this because it's in Rose Park and it is a great location, uh, but they are coming down on short term rentals. And so a lot of us online are going, no more short term rentals, right? Some of us are still excited about it and that's great. Um, but the best thing that you did was, well, but you could sandwich it. You could do a seller, seller finance. And I was like, that's my boy. I love you so what? much. Let's yeah. turn that $200 cash flow into what was it, $1,200 or $1,000 a month? Yes. Yeah. It was like $1,200 with after all of it, you know, because, um, you know, after uh, taxes and insurance and all that, right. I think it still came to like $600 a month in cash flow. You know what? In Utah right now, for only having to put down $40,000, bada bing, bada boom, all day long. And my favorite part is you don't have to have property management company. You don't have to have, right? I mean, if you sell or sell or finance it, it's fantastic because now all the issues that you would normally have to deal with of like, oh, well, I got to save money for, you know, vacancy and I got to save. It's like, whoa, no, 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 no. Let's, I mean, it might take you a second to rent it out. So let's not be too overzealous, right? But, um, but yeah, I mean, if the roof goes out, whose problem is it? Right. Not yours. <laughs> you're, you're, you're in the bank position. So I don't get to call my mortgage. I don't call my mortgage company when my roof leaks. They're like, dude, why are you call me? Are you making your payments? That's all we care about. You know, yeah. click and yeah. Yeah. The amazing thing. Cool. I mean, you can, when you sell like that, you can still get a down payment. So all the money you put in potentially you can get all the way back out. And so it's like massive income plus passive income. Hmm. Yes. Yes. I'll take no, some of that. Brilliant. And you know, you have to know who you're marketing that to. I don't think yes. you could have marketed that to like everyone, you know, uh, mm -hmm. as far as like a mass 5,000 list of wholesalers um, that we have, you know, you probably couldn't do that just because people would be like, are you talking about right but us educated investors we all on this call and should be if you're not yet uh will be uh know that that is fantastic and the same you know we talked to multiple different you know uh, eight, uh agent or excuse me different people who've done sandwiches and every single time it was like well the same risk apply so whether you're doing a traditional seller finance or you're doing a double seller finance is still risks apply and I liked it. I liked it a lot. So I was really happy. Oh, right. Roxy loves sandwiches. All right, good. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, they're sexy. I love so, it. So. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Yeah. Well, all this sandwich uh, talk is making me hungry. I kind of have I, a I do question. Know, I do know Sid has a question. So let's let's go to Sid. Oh, please. 
So I have a question. It's a little bit off topic. So I've been in wholesaling now for the past three months, and I nice. cannot tell you the roller coasters I have gone through, yeah. the things that I have seen. The first thing I always ask is POF and LLC. And I'm able to weed out a lot of people by doing this. But mm -hmm. do you guys have any advice for someone entering wholesaling? It is such a beast and it is like, oh man, I, I love you guys. First off, let me say you guys, everyone, mainly I have been to so many BNIs. I've been through so many educational courses and there's nothing like this. I love how you guys are so authentic. You guys talk about real things and I love how you guys present things so differently from so many business networks out there. So I just want to say thank you. Um, but yeah, any advice you guys have, I keep, I'm going to keep coming to these. I get very busy sometimes, so I don't have the time. So when I can, I love it. So yeah, um, without further ado, go ahead. <laughs> uh, well, wholesaling in, in my humble opinion is probably the most work intensive activities in real estate that there is. Cause you're, you're knocking on doors, you're making phone calls. Now you can get to a point where you're, you're spending money to get that time back. There was a one point in time I was spending $10,000 in marketing and to get my time back. Cause I was making phone calls, 600, 600 numbers a day. So yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. You know, you can definitely get through it. I was using a dialer. So it doesn't, so it's, it's less impressive than it sounds. Um, but uh, you can definitely, it's not for everyone. And that's the cool thing about real estate. You can kind of pick and choose whatever fits your personality. If your personality is not knocking on doors, calling people, or you don't have a ton of money to put into mailers or ads or whatever, you can like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to get on Jared's wholesale list. I'm going to get on, on, on Sid's wholesale list. And then when they find something, I can pick it up, you know? So you can, it's a beauty of it. But as far as like, it's just as another wholesaler from another wholesaler to wholesaler, it's just, as long as you don't give up and you keep on grinding you're going to figure out those, those little tricks and keep watching those classes. Cause dude, I, I, can I, can I bring it? So Dave, are you still here? Can I, can I, I'm tell Dave's story. Where's he at? Did he, still, did he leave? Dave had to step out, but, uh, okay. But still share. Dave, I'll, I'll share, I'll share a story. So I, I even Dave love him to death. He, um, he was trying to wholesale by himself for three years. I've known him for three years. We, we met on, on social media, we got connected and, uh, I've been telling him, dude, you need to sign up, get, get some courses, get some education. You're hurting yourself. And, and he, he just couldn't, you know, the situation or just didn't, you know, put it in priority. Um, he had money, then he's put it in different things. Like, dude, come on, tell me small stuff. And, and he would get like 12, 13 properties under contract. Couldn't close anything. Just couldn't do it. He got his education less than six weeks ago. And he got his, he got his first deal on a contract today. Heck yeah. Woo! And, and it's, and it's a real deal, but not like the other ones he was doing before. So he was trying so hard that YouTube university, he was doing like the $500 courses here and there. And he was doing everything he possibly could without actually like saying, okay, Jared, finally, let's do it. You know, relentlessly, he's like, fine, let me, let me get this education thing you're talking about. Okay, cool. Fine. Let's do this, man. And six weeks later, he's in his first transaction and, and we are actually negotiating two other deals with him uh, uh, that we, wow. Yeah, like more in, in, the, in, the, yeah. in the works. So Ooh, by so getting the education and taking action, it blew things away. So I know it's kind of a, a side tangent a little bit, but getting the education, you're, you're, you're going to be miles ahead of anyone else out there. So that's going to put you out there and just don't give up. That's absolutely. That's no, I, I am so lucky. I have a pocket full of investors growing, but what I'm finding is I'm I'm start I'm having a struggle building a system because I have properties, but I have all these investors that either a lowball or they put in the offer and then they're like, Hey Sid, do you have any creative financing? And I can mm -hmm. glue one hundred percent finance deals. I've even glued investors together to piggyback off of one another. Sure. But it's kind of a huge messy beat, right? Because they all get ran off at title. None of these are talking to attorneys. So it's it turns into a big mess. So yeah. I feel like these topics are something. So absolutely. I think education, I'm going to get with you guys a little bit more. Um, I've been wanting to come to these classes. I just, with trying to save deals, it's like a 24 hours thing. So anyways, right. I'm going to stop talking. Thank you guys. I will connect with you guys. I absolutely have been wanting to come more to Maylee's classes. I've been watching her for a while. 
Guys, Melee is it. I'm telling you, I have seen so many people in Salt Lake City. I'm coming from California. Melee is it. Like, they are doing something that most people aren't doing. She's not getting paid to educate us. She's doing this out of passion. So, really, I just want to say, Melee and Jared, thank you. And Mitch, thank you so much for your time. And Mitch, I'm sorry I didn't respond to your messages. I know. Anyways, thanks, guys. I love you, Sid. (laughs) <laughs> Thanks, my friend. <laughs> I will say too, just to you know. Um, I agree. Say, By the way, Maylee is it? Uh, She's awesome. Oh, she is awesome. Oh, Jared's pleasure. all right too. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I, I was but, when I went door knocking with her. Sorry, not to interrupt. But when sure. I went door knocking her with the first time, like my jaw was 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 just open the whole time. Like this, how she would get in freaking doors. It was the middle of winter, and and it was just the stuff that she would say and do. Like, oh, is that your tree? Like, like just pattern interrupts, and it's just like what is this some witchery or something just just blew me away it was just i learned a college education in like two days i'm not even kidding it was amazing. Uh, i love it it is definitely learning my fire when you're indoors right i yeah. mean it's do or die um that that's the biggest takeaway i think you know said you are in the grind and anyone that's trying to you know most of us start out our career um, without money to invest to throw at so you get deals coming to you right most of us find us that we start with sweat equity because that's how we're trained and that's how our mind, you know, our mindset is, is like, oh, I got to put the time in to learn these things. I highly applaud that. And I want you to actually figure those things out. You're going to get through a certain section in your career though, and go, wait a second, I need deals come to me, right? I need deals to come to me instead. I don't have the bandwidth to make 600 phone calls a day. I don't have the bandwidth to be on the phone for, you know, five to 10 hours a day. Like, it will strain you and you will get burnt out and you will be like, I'm done. I'm never doing this again. I don't care that I made 15 grand. This is stupid, you know, and be done with it. Um, yeah. So if, if you're ever there, then what I want you to do is take a step back and create a system because leads do come in. And what happens is if you're willing to stick around long enough and you're willing to be loud enough, let people know you're an investor. And maybe if you're already an influencer like Allison Chavez that just said, yes, right. I'm you're already there. You're already an influencer. You're already someone that people look up to. You're already somebody that people care about. And there's a lot of you online, actually Sid's one uh, that's an influencer. And so if you already have a connection, you already have a network of people that you can, you know, lean into. I highly recommend just being like, Hey, listen, just so you know, I am partnering up with, maybe you don't want to be known as the investor, right? Maybe you don't want to be known. That's you're not your brand, but you know, you need to be doing these things. Well, first off, you just buy them from Jared. You can buy them from us. You can just buy them from, (laughs) right? Like you don't have to be the person generating all those leads. And although we just bought this deal from Jared and Michelle, who's on the line here was in on it. She's the one that's actually buying it. I just kind of put them together and round the numbers and helped them out. Um, you know, it was still a deal. So just, so Jared's not gouging the deal out. He was made sure that it was still a deal. Everyone wins, everyone gets paid. So there's plenty of deals to go around. You have like what, six more behind you? I, I so I got two under contract today. I have three more that were like, I should get another one under contract because we're we're finalizing everything on, on I'm having a meeting with her on tomorrow, Thursday. It's, yeah, tomorrow. Thursday. So I'll have, I'll have like like five more in within the next two weeks. And this is just the funnel. It keeps on getting bigger, bigger, bigger. So it's just. But, but fortune is in the follow-up. So people who I have talked to two years ago that were in a really bad scenario are just now getting the call, the note called due. And this is how I'm going to end this. And then we'll open it up to whatever, how Jared wants to end this. But there are so many people who, because of COVID, right? The forbearance process mm-hmm. and how it went, through, how it went down, made it to where they couldn't. The banks couldn't call the notes due, right? And because they couldn't call the notes due, they could be. I mean, I'm talking to people who are a year and a half to two years behind. I mean, I the home I sold, I ended up just actually selling it on the MLS like listing market because she was behind two hundred and ten thousand dollars. There's no investor that's picking that up. And it was a crap hole, right? Like that's a no for anyone. Great for a DIY. It was in Heber. So it totally made sense for that scenario. But um, but what, right? Like so many scenarios that it's sad that that's where we're at in this world is that the spare people didn't realize that they, when they went into forbearance, 
almost all the banks that I've ever seen so far put it on the front end. They didn't put it on the back end. So if they went in forbearance for a year or they went in forbearance for six months or two years, guess what? All of that note is due at the time that they're trying to re-up their loan. Well, and, well on, on that note too, because that is if, if they can refinance it, awesome. But here's the thing. If you're not able to make payments for two years, you're probably behind other things too. And so your, your credit's down the tubes. A lot of times they can't even qualify to refi. So that's where they're in that situation. It's like, I owe $50,000 today. That's my next, because I missed six months of payments or a year of payments. What do I do? And that's when, sorry. Yeah, yeah. no, that's exactly it. So this is a sweet spot. And this is what I want you to really, everyone that's here, and I want you to share this message. And I want you to share this video once it goes live on YouTube. I really want you to like break free from your, your brains of being like, oh, I'm so scared. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. Stop being scared. Take action. Like Jared said, it's, it's game time that you're going to miss out on an incredible window if you don't take action right now. Right now is the best time to do seller financing than there has been in a really long it's time. It's fire. It's right? fire right now, guys. I'm not even kidding. Don't, don't wow. hesitate. Don't hold back. Put everything you have into it because there are buyers for it on the open market, which means like MLS, we can relist it right immediately with the seller finance terms of mm -hmm. people. I have four properties that are listed right now with seller financing. And I get at least four text messages and 10 calls a week. And I'm not over exaggerating. And they want it, right? They're like, how do I get this? The market sucks. I need a seller finance deal. Right. Uh, there's no better time. And I will say if COVID comes back, y'all, right? Something to think about. If COVID comes back, like they're talking about on the news and the little chitter that's out there, right? If in December, right? If that comes back for any reason and people go back into forbearance because they can, and they'll take advantage of it like we know they will, there's no more seller finance terms. There's no more people wanting, there's no more distressed properties, I said, right? There'll be people that need to move. There'll be people like that and divorce leads and mess, right? But not, not for seller financing. Seller financing works if they have fantastic terms, 2.5 interest, and then, right, you can leverage that. That's how seller financing works. So we're going to miss that mark if it does take hold. So don't wait, don't hesitate, jump in, get into one of these deals that we have. If you want to be on Jared's list, please put your email um, in the chat so that Jared can snag those from you. Um, or just email me and I'll let, you know, Jared know. Um, email, or Jared, put your email in the chat and then everybody can sure. just email you. That works too. Yeah, that may be because I... Yeah. Yeah. I'm he's not gonna be able to write everybody's stuff down real fast. Exactly. So. That's where yeah, yeah. I'm sitting that. Yeah. So you can also follow me on, on Facebook if you guys want. Um, I like I don't mind helping people out as long as they 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 at least have have the education so they know what they're doing. I want to have I work with people that, that know what they're doing. Like Dave, for example, he had the education, so he kind of I knew he was gonna be okay if I he he was able, he just needed some extra help along the way. So if you need help just closing something down and you're, you're already involved, you're there, then yeah, absolutely. Let's, let's reach out to me on Facebook. Um, Jared Brenchley. It's, it's with this guy, this face. Yep. Um, yes. While he's putting that in there, I have a few announcements and then we'll let Jared close out the night with how we can get a hold of him and how we can send him love um, and light. So a few announcements are tomorrow night here local. If you're around, we are doing another workshop um four pillars of wealth and so how to unlock financial freedom there was a lot of people that showed up there was like 64 people that came to our meeting last week it was awesome and a lot of people didn't bring their significant other or like their best friend or whoever they wanted to really see it and be a part of their business and so usually right what happens is go oh no i can't repeat this <laughs> I don't know how to like explain what I just went and saw, you know? And so we are going to be doing another one tomorrow night at 7 p.m. at my office at Top Equity. Um, it's a beautiful location. It's easy to get to, great parking. You don't have to stress about parking at all. Uh, and if you wanna come early and you're already a part of our network or you wanna learn and become more a part of our network, show up at 6.30 and that's where we're gonna be doing a lot of networking and drinks and just talk and socialize our community is what makes us different and that's kind of what some of the people were you know talking about earlier but deals are being shared deals are being transferred deals are being talked about and ideas are being uh shared that's where the magic happens is at 6 30 tomorrow night at my office it's in murray 
the link is actually in the description. I put it in, in chat. Um, it's all over my face, all of our social media. You cannot miss it if you follow us. <laughs> like I've blasted it a million times. Um, and feel free to blast it on your social media as well. Feel free to share, um, just have people register. We won't have enough uh, seats for everyone. And then on Monday, this is my last announcement, on Monday, uh, this upcoming week, Mark Kohler is going to be teaching. Um, yes, I know, I'm very excited. So if you log into your back office, you can register for it. Uh, and as long as you have your essentials, um, then you can watch this because he's going to be going over day two of taxes. And we don't get Mark Kohler around very often. So that's a huge like, ooh, make sure you're there. It's Monday. Um, it'll be right after the uh, corporate call. So make sure you jump on and, and get excited and get your can, people. So can I just one one plug for Mark oh, Kohler? Yeah. I, I made more money than I ever had in my entire life last year. I was paying more taxes when I was working at Walmart than I did last year. <laughs> the stuff I learned from him. So just, you know, yes. just saying. Yes. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I love that. <laughs> but so true. Uh, okay, so if we wanted to work with, what's your ideal situation right now? If somebody could start working with you, you know, what do you what are you looking for in your business? How can we serve you, Jared? Sure. Well, I mean, if if it's how can I serve you, right? That's what I, that's what I'm kind of looking at. And if if you're if you have some education, you know what's going on, right? And you just need help closing it. Like you have a lead, you have an appointment with a seller, but you don't. You're not sure if you can do it alone, or you want some help. Or yeah. maybe you got something in a contract, like I need a, I'm not trying to wholesale, but I can't find a buyer. Well, let's, let's take a look, you know? I may or may not be able to help, I have no idea, but we can take a look at it and see if, if we can. It's like with Dave, you know, he, he he had the education and then he brought some deals to me, like, okay, let's take a look at it. And then I, I jumped on the phone, he was with me the whole time, watching the negotiation process, and he's like, oh my God. So those are, those are what, anything I can do to help. Now, if we're partnering a deal, we're, we're, we're partnering the deal, we're, we're like as far as, you know, just I, I, just like realtors, they care about the commission. I care about getting money too. Okay, oh, let's be real. Sure. Nobody right? works for free. You absolutely, help. absolutely. If, if you oh, make yeah. money, let's make, we'll both make money. Sounds good, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, anything I can do to help, let's 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 close some deals. That's what I want to do. Cool, man. Well, I love you. We're so grateful to have you. I mean, it's been an honor always when you're here. People show up. People are excited to learn from you. Um, you're constantly teaching, you know, so look out for Jared. Definitely make sure you follow him on Facebook because he has a lot of great tips and tricks that he shares every single day. Um, and then he also does a lot of workshops outside of, you know, Zoom calls and things like this. So make sure you're following him to give him a lot of love and support. And then as always, we love you. We're grateful for you. Mitch, do you have any last minute thoughts that you wanted to say? I do not. Thank you guys for being here. We're excited to see you all tomorrow. All right. Well, Take it easy and um, stay safe.